at the end of this video, you will learn how to calculate quartiles for grouped data. There are two methods of doing this. The first method is using formula, while the second method is using OGIVE, which is cumulative frequency graph. And this method too will be considered in the next video. In this method one, we are going to learn how to calculate the lower quartile, middle quartile, and upper quartile for grouped data using formula. Let's consider this question. In a company work study investigation, the times taken by 20 men to complete a particular job were tabulated as shown below. Calculate for the lower quartile, middle quartile, upper quartile, and interquartile range. To obtain the lower quartile, we are going to need this formula. To compute for the middle quartile, which is the same thing as the median, we are going to need this formula. Also, to compute for the upper quartile, we are going to need this formula. To solve this problem, step number one, draw a frequency distribution table like this. Step number two, fill out the class interval, which we have been given in the question. From here, you can see that we have a class interval of three. Step number three, fill out the frequency from the question, this are the frequency. After filling out the frequency, next, add up all the frequencies. And here, we got a total of 20, which is the size of the sample. Next, compute for the midpoint, which is also the class mark. Consider the first row. And you see we got 8 plus 10 divided by 2. Our answer is 9. Hence, we got 9 here. Next, consider the second row. And we got 11 plus 13 divided by 2. And our answer is 12. Hence, we got 12 here. Do same to complete other rows. Compute for the cumulative frequency. Using the frequency column. Here, we start with the first one, 2. And we write 2. Next is 2 plus 4. And you got 6. Next, 6 plus 6. And you got 12. Next, 12 plus 4. And you got 16. Next, 16 plus 3. And you got 19. Next, 19 plus 1. And you got 20. The last sum must be equal to the sum of the frequency. If not, Probably go back and check where you made a mistake. Now that we have completed the cumulative frequency column, the next step is to compute for our lower quartile, middle quartile, upper quartile, and interquartile range. Step 6. Compute for the lower quartile using this formula. From the frequency distribution table, we are going to find L1, C1, F1, and W1, and also N. And for the lower quartile, here we got N over 4. To achieve step 6, we are going to split it further into other steps. Let's start with step 6A find the position of the lower quartile class using this formula. The position of the lower quartile class is on the 5.25th position. However, we are going to round it off to the nearest whole number. 2 is not up to 5, hence it will be on the 5th position. From the cumulative frequency, this is second position 
the fifth position is going to be here. Hence, we trace it on this line and this becomes our class. That is, the lower quartile class. After obtaining this position, it's now easier to find every other variable in the formula. In the step 6b, let's find the lower class boundary of the lower class. This is the lower class boundary. We are going to add it to 10 and divide by 2. Here, we obtain L1 as 10.5. In step 6c, let's find the cumulative frequency of the class before the lower class. The cumulative frequency before the lower class is 2. Hence, 2 becomes our C1. After obtaining C1, next, in 6D, we are going to find the frequency of the lower class. On the same line as the lower class, the frequency is 4. Hence, 4 becomes our F1. Having obtained F1, in step 6E, let's look for total number of the sample, which here is 20. From the table, the summation of F is 20, which also is N, and we also can have it as capital N for this question. And this is how we obtain the 20. Step 6F. The class width of the lower class is 3. That's 11, 12, and 13. That's a width of 3. Having obtained L1, N, C1, W1, and F1, we now substitute into the quart lower quartile formula. Solve for this first. Divide by 4. Multiply by 3. Lastly, you add to 10.5. And our answer is 12.75. Step 7. Let's compute for the middle quartile. Put it the same thing as the median. Using this formula. And instead of n over 4, like in the lower quartile, we now got n over 2. To find the middle quartile class, step A, we need to use this formula. And when you substitute, we are going to say that is on the 10.5th position. However, we are going to run this off to 11, which is the nearest whole number. Next, let's consider the table of the 11th position. This is 2. This is 6. 11th position is going to be here. Hence, we trace this row and this becomes our class. That is, the position of the middle quartile class. In step 7b, let's find the lower class boundary of the middle class. The lower class boundary is 14. We add it to 13 and divide by 2. And if you do that, you're going to get 13.5. In step 7c, let's find the cumulative frequency of the class before the middle class. This is the cumulative frequency before the middle class. Hence, here becomes our C2. And that's how our C2 is 6. The cumulative frequency of the middle class is 6. Hence, 6 becomes our F2. That's how we got 6. Next, on step 7a, is the total number of sample. And here, the total number of sample is 20, which was obtained from the table. The class width still remains 3 which is 14, 15, 16. Next, for L2, you substitute this. For N, you substitute this. For C2, you substitute this. For F2, you substitute this. 
and for W, you substitute this. Next, solve this first, divide by this, multiply by this, and finally add to this. If you compute this carefully, you have 15.5 as your median or middle quartile. In step 8, let's compute for the upper quartile using this formula. The upper quartile will now have 3n over 4 in this position. In step 8a, we're going to find the position of the upper quartile class using this formula. And when you substitute carefully, we are going to get 15.75. You round it off to the nearest whole number, which is 16. From the table, this is 2, 6, 12, and this is the 16th position. This is the position of the class that has a cumulative frequency equal to or next greater than the 16th position. Hence, we trace it on this row and this becomes our class, which is the upper quartile class. Step 8b. We're going to find the lower class boundary of the upper class. From the table, this is the lower class. And we're going to add it to 16 and divide by 2. And this is the 17 plus 16 divided by 2 and our L3 becomes 16.5. Next is step 8C. We'll find the cumulative frequency of the class before the upper class. The cumulative frequency of the class is 16 and before this is 12. Hence, 12 becomes our C3. After obtaining C3, next is 8D will find the frequency of the upper class. The frequency of this class is 4. Hence, 4 becomes our F3. Now that we have obtained F3, let's obtain your total number of sample, which still remains 20. And the class width still remains 3. The summation of the frequency is 20 and the class width is 1, 2, 3. In this formula, for L3, we put this. For N, we put this. For F3, we substitute 4. For C3, we substitute 12. And for W, we substitute 3. Substituting carefully, solve this first. Subtract from this. Divide by this multiply by 3 and finally add to 16.5 and the upper quartile becomes 18.75 step 9 compute for the interquartile range from step 6 we obtained our quart lower quartile from step 7 we obtained our middle quartile and from step 8 we obtained our upper quartile the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile which is six this is statistics you can try out this exercise and leave your answers in the comment section follow the steps on the screen to locate other videos the next video is on method two for calculating quartiles using ogive cumulative frequency graph i will see you in the next video